good morning dear students welcome back to my lecture class on engineering physics module 5 that is materials and material characterization techniques so in my last three videos i had explained you about nano materials nano composites nano technology and construction and working of different instruments and uh, characterization studies now it is time to go ahead with scanning tunneling electron microscope so in the last class i explained you what is electron microscope how it works and also we discussed in detail about transmission electron microscope now it is time to learn scanning tunneling electron microscope see scanning tunneling microscope is used for imaging surfaces at atomic level so once again it is only for surface study only for surface study principle working principle this is slightly advanced concept in quantum mechanics you study what is called particle in one dimensional box in module 2 you study about schrodinger wave equation then what is called wave function and eigen function eigen value etc then you derive one expression for particle in one dimensional box it is a potent potential well of uh, finite width and infinite height there you obtain the expression for energy quantum mechanics predict one peculiar thing which is very difficult to accept in the classical mechanics what is that peculiar thing see if this is a wall of the potential well electron is hitting continuously this wall and we all know pretty well that the collisions are elastic so it rebounds back but according to quantum mechanics if particle that is electron makes several attempts there is a chance of uh, 0.1% or maybe less than that but certainly there is a small chance of that particle getting out of the box that means it can penetrate through the box it can not uh, tunnel through the box so particle actually it is not exactly particle which is tunneling wave nature associated with the particle that means in quantum mechanics we say wave exactly ends here in potential in one dimensional box problem you recall probability density ends here that means you have node here you have node here right but uh, sometimes there is a chance of wave ending even here also that means wave expands little bit beyond the wall so whatever that part of the wave appearing this side can be called as a tunneling so wave associated with the electron gets tunneled through the wall it is as good as electron tunneling through the wall so according to quantum mechanics when electron hits the wall there is a small possibility of electron tunneling through the wall and possibility of finding the electron outside the potential well also so this is called quantum tunneling and this particular instrument that is scanning tunneling microscope works on that principle see when electron tunnels out for tunneling we have to satisfy certain conditions so what is the condition you have to apply some amount of potential difference okay here we have o electrons in this region we have number of electrons and i bring one electrode here some probe here so between the probe and electron there is a definite gap this is ocean of electrons here is the probe between these two there is a small gap that small gap matters a lot now if i develop potential difference if i maintain some potential difference between these two then electrons will tunnel in that gap means as if <coughs> electrons are flowing in that gap that flow of electrons constitute current and that current is called tunneling current and that tunneling current here onwards i call it as id that i tunneling current it depends upon gap so how close the probe and the electron ocean what is this electron ocean certainly it is the surface of the material you know on the surface of the material we have atoms atoms have electrons like that now i bring the probe very close to it very close to it but not touching the surface just above the surface i maintain the distance then according to quantum mechanics electrons will go from the specimen to probe as a result current is established and measure the current try to know about the surface so this is the principle of scanning tunneling electron microscope because electrons are tunneling it is called tunneling microscope what is the role of scanning here 
Yes, it is very much similar to previous SEM scanning electron microscope. Here, this probe is scanning the surface in the raster fashion. It goes like this, like this, like this, like this, along x axis, y axis, x axis, y axis, this way. So, it keeps on scanning. During each scan, electrons are tunneled. Electrons, they fly from the surface to the probe. As a result, you will gather information not only from one particular point on the surface, from the entire surface, not only from one particular point, from the entire surface, you gather the information. So thereby, you can study the surface of the specimen designed. So I repeat, scanning, tunneling, electron microscope works on the principle of tunneling of electrons. Tunneling of electrons is purely quantum mechanical concept. It is not at all there in classical mechanics. No electron can just pass without any medium. Of course, they flow provided you give sufficient energy. That is totally different. That I call as emission. Here, tunneling means they go in a particular direction and they establish current. That is more important. So, according to quantum mechanics, electrons tunnel beyond the surface of a solid when suitable PD is applied, potential difference is applied between the surface and the probe. This tunneling produces a current called IT, tunneling current. Tunneling current is highly sensitive to the distance and it decreases with increase in the distance, this distance, distance between the probe and the surface. As the distance increases, current decreases. So this is the working principle of STEM. This is what I explained. Look at the illustration here. This is the substance, atom surface. This is the surface. And I have a probe here. I have a probe here. This is the probe. That probe is made up of a thin material, very thin needle type material. And then this is a metal strip. And when I maintain potential difference between the metal strip and the sample, electrons jump from here to there and then they flow in the external circuit. So this external circuit is connected to a detector. The detector will detect the current. As I told just now, current is inversely proportional to the gap. So from this you can measure unevenness on the surface, whether the surface is even or uneven, all those things you can easily make out. So now let us see how the instrument is designed, means how it is constructed. Construction part, obviously there must be a sharp tip, sample holder, feedback loop. Feedback loop is nothing but detector. So it consists of scanning probe, sample holder, feedback loop. Tip of the probe is as small as size of the atom. So it must be very, very, very small tip. Feedback loop monitors the tunneling current and coordinates the current and positioning of the tape. So feedback loop, whatever you have, it not only measures current coming from the uh, tape, it also monitors the gap, also monitors the gap, whether it is very close to the surface or far away from the surface, all those things are monitored by the feedback loop. This is the diagram. Look at the diagram. This uh, pink color line is probe. That probe is connected to power supply and then detector, which is feedback loop. And this is the surface. Look at the surface of the sample. It is not even, it is a rough surface. See, when you look at the surface, it may look very smooth, but it is not so in reality. At the atomic level, it is not so 100% smooth. There will be some unevenness. There may be pits, there may be humps, there may be pits, there may be holes. So, zigzag surface it is. As your probe moves, as your probe moves, wherever there is pit, distance will be more, current is less. Wherever is hump, distance is less, current will be more. So, by knowing the value of current, you can make out whether there is a pit or hump. If there is no change in the current throughout the scanning, you can uh, easily say that there is no unevenness. The surface is perfectly smooth, like that you can make out. So, this is the working procedure. Here is the working procedure. The sharp tip positioned a few nanometers above the sample surface. 
small voltage is applied between the tip and the surface of course you have to maintain the potential difference otherwise electrons cannot fly electrons cannot tunnel so in order to maintain the tunneling effect continuously you need to apply potential difference as a result electrons tunnel across the gap as the tip is moved across the surface in x and y direction that means raster scanning raster scanning changes in the surface height and population of electron states cause changes in the current changes in the surface changes in the electron accumulation changes in the accumulation means density of atoms current will change by knowing the change in the current by knowing the change in the current you can easily make out the surface nature concentration of the material that way surface details are obtained using this instrument so in this instrument please remember dear students it works on the principle of tunneling effect in addition to that scanning effect okay so this is the main part of this particular instrument that is stem now moving on to atomic force microscope atomic force microscope see till now we were talking about electron related microscope x ray related the instruments like xrd xps electron microscope in electron microscope we had stem sem tem like that so we had electron involved in those instruments now it is atomic force microscope what is this atomic photo, uh, micro force microscope it is a high resolution non optical imaging technique first of all no source of light required no lens arrangement required either optical lens or magnetic lens okay no lens arrangement required that's why it is called as non optical instrument it is also called as scanning force microscope already we had one scanning microscope that is scanning electron microscope but this is scanning force microscope so it is also called as sfm principle when a nano scale tip attached to a cantilever is placed very close to the specimen surface and moved on the surface in a raster pattern that means x and y direction along x and y direction cantilever bends due to interatomic forces this bending is detected by an arrangement of laser beam positioned above the surface and also with the help of detector see i explain let me take this as a beam this is called cantilever beam to this cantilever beam i attach one needle say this pencil is my needle so attach one needle okay one needle right this is the needle attached so this is called cantilever beam this is probe this needle is probe as i move move the cantilever on the surface this cantilever bends like this okay or it bumps like this so how much it bends how much it bumps it all depends on the surface structure now i allow one laser beam to fall on the top of this you know cantilever on this scale i put one reflector here say mirror i allow laser beam to fall on this that laser beam gets reflected proceeds towards the detector if there is no bump sorry if there is no depression if there is no bump laser beam travel same distance suppose while moving for some reason if it bends like this if it bends like this then the reflected beam will take more time to travel did you understand this point the reflected beam takes more time to travel so the time difference you can measure if it is taking more time means there is a bending downward vertically downward one vertically downward movement occurs when there is a pull pull from the surface why there is a pull it is because of hooke's law this you might have studied in puc because of hooke's law there is a force of attraction as a result it bends this way and the force of attraction depends on the morphology of the substance depends on the structure of the surface if there is some unevenness on the surface if there is some concentration of atoms on the surface there will be more attraction as a result 
laser beam takes more time and that time you measure with the help of detector this is nothing but atomic force microscope it is called force microscope because the cantilever beam is bending due to attraction force got it so force is involved and it is because atomic force microscope because the needle what you attach you know the probe what you attach the tip of the probe the tip of the probe must be as small as as small as atom the tip of, see this is pencil pencil tip is very short about say 1 mm or less than that but the probe what i need is much 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 smaller than that almost equivalent to one atom size so because the tip is in the atomic size and the tip gets attracted because of the force the whole instrument is called as atomic force microscope i hope you understood the principle of afm i repeat principle of afm is very much similar or very much depending on cantilever concept cantilever beam attached with probe due to force of attraction it goes down if there is more force more vertical down movement if there is no force no movement if there is hump it pushes up so this vertical movements are detected with the help of laser and a detector this is the working principle of atomic force microscope see whatever i explained with the help of scale and the pencil is here in this diagram so observe this diagram carefully this is the scale what i showed and this is the probe the look at the tip tip is very sharp this is the specimen surface and here is a laser source laser beam falls here that is the place where i have a small piece of mirror and after reflection it goes towards the detector detector is nothing but photo detector this is a rough sketch of atomic force microscope it is almost like touch and feel concept see dear student i want to know whether the surface is smooth or rough how do you do that just by touching it is sensing that's all so it is something like touch and feel concept so simple it is well moving on to construction and working it essentially consists of laser detector cantilever beam sharp tip made up of silicon and feedback system these are the different parts of the afm and like how afm looks specimen tip of the probe cantilever beam laser beam mirror mirror is not shown here reflected beam and a detector something like photo detector working the tip is brought very sorry the the, the pencil tip tip is very brought very close to the sample force between the tip and the sample leads to deflection according to hooke's law this is what i mentioned it is moved on the surface the tip is moved on the surface that means the cantilever beam cantilever beam cantilever beam is moved on the surface like this that is in a raster manner x axis y axis x axis y axis so i move to and fro like this something like a printer printer in the computer it moves like this no so that way it moves raster pattern laser beam falling on the back surface of the cantilever it reflects it reflects and then the reflected beam is detected by the photo detector when the tip encounter bump or depression means pit on the surface of the sample it gets deflected this is what i already explained wherever there is a dip or hump the beam vibrates like this accordingly the reflected beam also reflected light also and thereby it uh, gives some data in the detector and based on that data you can you can reconstruct the image of the substance you can reconstruct the image of the substance surface of the substance so this movement is detected by the photo detector and uh, the those signals are amplified and thereby you can get 3d profile of the entire surface so dear students afm principle it works on the principle of cantilever it works on the principle of cantilever and of course hooke's law it is called atomic force microscope because tip of the probe is atomic size force microscope because the tip is moving down up down up because of the force 
and that force is provided by hooke's law hence it is called as atomic force microscope so this is about the construction work and working of different instruments so dear students i tried my level best to make the things as simple as possible so you focus mainly on the working principle construction part and then working part and also applications well during my lecture in order to prepare this video i referred many sources including following e source websites i advise you to refer all these websites and i duly acknowledge the following e resources so these are the websites i am extremely thankful to all of them in fact the whatever the diagrams i reconstructed totally based on the clue obtained from these websites so i am thankful to all the websites all the links given below i am thankful to our honorable vice chancellor uh, honorable registrar evaluation registrar examination chairman board of studies e shikshana vtu coordinator director regional director and uh, to my our principal principal of bangalore institute of technology and my colleagues and everyone who supported me in this endeavor i first of all okay uh, no thank uh, uh, sorry finally i thank each and every one each and every one uh, who supported me i also thank students who are going to be benefited and going to be you know prop propagate this uh, video among their friend circle and uh, students of other universities also thank you thank you once again please share your feedback no hesitations your feedback is very important for me so that i can improvise this video in my next semester tutorial thank you very much